These are my absolute favorite fall book recs. These are the books that are gonna give you all the feels. They're gonna make you so excited for the season and these are the books that are just so, so heartfelt. I've shared a video with a bunch of thriller recs and I've also shared a video with books of a bunch of different genres and these are just my tried and true favorites for fall. I will say there are a mix of genres here with like fantasy and thrillers and contemporary fiction and romance. So I feel like there are primarily contemporary fiction and romance in the stack just because I've already done a whole video with just thrillers. So if you guys want to go check that out, I will link both of those videos below with the thriller recs and also with the fall recs. These are my favorite fall recs, so you guys are going to be really surprised by some of these, but also some of these you won't be. So let's get into this video and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to start off sharing a bunch of romances because I feel like whenever I get into the fall season, I want to read romances that are going to make me cry my eyes out. Like every single year when fall comes, that's what I'm like leaning towards. And I think it's because I don't really like reading super sad books in the like winter because usually I'm kind of sad and I'm trying to like get out of that and also in the summer I'm looking for like a fluffy and fun read you know so in the winter and in the summer and really in the spring I don't really gravitate towards those like heavy deep emotional books but in the fall I definitely do and one of the best recs for that that I can recommend if you haven't read this book is Fast by Millie Belazar this book will make you sob. I think it gives fall to me because you see her go throughout her life and just like crawl and claw her way to the top to try to make her life be one that's not only worthwhile but also is like so meaningful and impactful. This is a story of a girl who is going through an incredible hardship and it starts at the age of eight and you really see the writing like almost be written as if she is an actual eight year old and then it goes all the way up until age 30 or 31 I think and you see her again like the writing is written as if she's like a 30 year old. It's kind of cool to see the writing like that, but I think this is great if you don't just read romance because there are so many other side plots as well, but she befriends a neighbor when she's younger and he kind of helps her get through some of the hardships that she's going through when she's young, but then they kind of drift apart and you see how much just, I can't even talk too much about everything that happens in this book, but definitely check the trigger warners, warnings if you guys um, are someone who likes to look at trigger warnings before you get into a story because this one is very deep and it is very, very hard to read. I will say there aren't a ton of reviews for this book because it is so like, it's like a hidden gem. I think there are maybe like 2,000 or 3,000 reviews and that's like pushing it on Goodreads and I'm pretty sure the review like scales like 4.6 out of 5. Like. People love this book who've read it. Now, when you go to this book, know that you're going to cry. Know that it's going to be heartfelt. Know that it's going to be sad, but also you're going to leave this book feeling like there's so much to life left worth living. You're going to leave feeling inspired. Um, and I feel like this is perfect for fall because those are the emotions I want to feel in fall. Another book that I think is great for autumn is Spin About You by Brianna Denae. This book is actually set around Thanksgiving. A bunch of friends, they get together for the holidays and whenever they get together, they kind of are just like going at each other, you know, just like how friends are. They have like a little cabin that they're um, having uh, like a little, I don't know if it's like a potluck or something like that around Thanksgiving. Giving. And the main character, she ends up meeting this guy and starts to fall for him. But like they obviously don't live near each other because they all came together to this cabin for Thanksgiving. This is a very short, sweet little novella. It's only 73 pages. It definitely gives like us. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's very rare that I'll read a book where I'm like, oh, I see myself in it. I see myself in this book. Like I felt like I was transported to my family Thanksgivings, to just like so many cultural moments in my life where like there are big gatherings. It is such a great story. And again, it's very short and it's literally set around Thanksgiving. So it's perfect for fall. Another book that I think is perfect for fall is Love in Other Words. And I think that this is the only repeat out of, yeah, this is the only repeat out of all of the books, but I couldn't go without like sharing this book in this video, even though I already shared it in my last fall recommendation video, because it is so perfect for fall. This is a story about two besties who they like had 
more than just a friendship and they started to have like feelings deeper for each other and you get to see a very nostalgic and beautiful romance. They meet up together, I think at like a little cabin. You can see there's like a little cabin here, there's books. It's just so perfect for fall. And they meet up every year because their parents kind of get together, but something pulls them apart. And years later, you figure out what it is and it is just so sad. But this book feels to me like fall because there's those feelings of like, like those nostalgic happy feelings that I want to feel in this season. Like the cozy feelings, like this is such a cozy book. And so that's why I always have to recommend it. It's the only repeat that I've shared in my um, other videos. I'm pretty sure all the other ones I think are not repeats. And then another book that is perfect for fall is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This book I think is actually set in, I want to say late summer. So it's like perfect time, like early fall. And this is about a couple who they have been divorced for a while, but they're kind of starting to have feelings for each other. But they're like, yeah, we can't go back. Like, right? Like, we can't do that, right? Like, they divorce for a reason. And whenever you figure out what that reason is, you're like, oh, I, okay, like, I see. And it is a very good, beautiful, incredible, heartwarming story. Um, they have kids together, they have a business together. So them having feelings for each other just definitely is not what they want to have happen. But it is a romance. Um, again, it's also something that I feel like would be great if you're looking for characters that are a little bit older. I don't know their age exactly, but I do know that they have like two kids, they have a very successful business, like it's giving like grown ups. So this is a great book for that. And then I have a bunch of books that, oh wait, actually I forgot one romance. Um, Drunk on Love by Jasmine Gullery. This is a great romance as well. Perfect for fall. It's about a winery owner, like literally she owns the winery and she's the boss. And this guy who he's kind of been working in a job that he's not obsessed with, but he does make like a lot of money. He decides to take like a little sabbatical and he's like, I'm just gonna do something else. He wants to find a job, but while he's job hunting, he goes to this bar. He's kind of like down on his luck. He's like, I just don't know like what I'm doing, like where I'm going, what kind of career I'm gonna have, like that kind of thing. He meets this lady at the bar. They hit it off. They end up having a one night stand. Neither of them ever have one night stands. And he ends up applying for a job the next day because he's like, you know what? I think I have figured out what I wanna do, at least for now. Applies, applies to a winery. The winery happens to be the winery of the woman that he hooked up with and had that one night stand with, she's the boss. She doesn't hire him. Her brother, who's a co-owner, ends up hiring him. And the whole story is set about that, around that tension at the winery. And they have events at the winery. It's definitely giving fall. Love this book so much. And another uh, stack of books that I wanna share are these two books, which these are the contemporary fiction books. I feel like I've been in my contemporary fiction era. Like I've been really leaning towards contemporary fiction a lot, especially as it gets closer to fall. One book that I read that I absolutely loved is Talking at Night by Claire Daverly. Now I think the books that I've been loving the most are contemporary fictions that have a subplot or a heavy plot of romance. And this is definitely very heavily focusing on the romance, but also focuses so much on grief. It focuses on disordered eating. It focuses on um, so many different aspects of life. And I can't really talk too much about this story, but just know it's a friends to lovers story. It's one of those where if you like Normal People by Sally Rooney, you might enjoy this story because it's definitely complex. There are characters who always don't make the right decisions and don't say the right thing, but it is a very beautiful read. I read it super, super fast. I don't think that I knew if I liked this book until I got 100 pages in. And then after that, I was like, oh, I love it. I think I read this one four stars, I'm pretty sure, or maybe 4.5, I can't remember. I do remember that I ended up very like obsessed with the story and really loving it. And then In Five Years by Rebecca Serrell, who's the author who wrote this book right here that actually just came out this year, um, The Expiration Dates. I read this book, I want to say like four years ago, I think. Um, I had just really gotten back into reading and I really enjoyed this book a lot. Um, it does have magical realism in it and it's one that I really enjoyed, which is surprising because I'm not a huge fan of magical realism. But uh, I don't fully remember like every single thing that happens in the story, but I do remember the vibe of it. I'm pretty sure it's set in New York City, which I feel like is the perfect vibe. Absolutely perfect vibe for fall. And I also remember the cozy feeling that I got while reading it, which is what I seek out whenever it is this season. 
Then I also have two thrillers. Not sure if these are repeats or not. I can't really remember if they're repeats in the thriller video or not, but I will link the video if you guys want to go watch the thriller video with a bunch of those thriller wrecks. But Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah is a great courtroom thriller. I recently read this book and loved it. It definitely made me want to read more courtroom thrillers because I don't know, I just feel like courtroom thrillers are so different than just like a regular thriller because it feels so real. The characters are literally in a courtroom and you don't know who's right or who's wrong because in the courtroom there are lawyers and attorneys who fight for each side and like it is such a good story. And I'll read the back because I don't want to give anything away but it says, on an ordinary working day, Lila receives a call that cleaves her life in two. Her brother-in-law's voice is filled with panic. His son's daycare has called to ask where little Max is. Her worst nightmare. Layla was supposed to drop Max off that morning, but she forgot. Racing to the parking lot, she grasps the horror of what she's done. Is about to come true. And it says, on an ordinary working day, her worst nightmare is about to come true. What follows an explosive, high profile trial that will tear the family apart, but as the case progresses, it becomes clear there's more to this incident than meets the eye. A gripping, brave, and tense courtroom drama, Next of Kin will keep you on the edge of your seat until the final heart stopping page. And I have to read the back because I do not want to give anything away. Such a good read. You'll read this and just be like blown away. And then another great read is The House Across the Lake. I finished this so fast. It was my first Riley Sager book. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I definitely want to read more from this author. Um, if you like stories that give like a, not spooky, but kind of like a, you know, like in the fall when it's like dark and it's crisp outside and it's cool and you have to throw on like a little jacket or a hoodie and you're just kind of like, not cozy, but like, I don't even know the word. I can't even think of the feeling. Like it's so hard to explain, but you get this, that feeling that I'm trying to like explain in this book. It's not spooky. Maybe ominous is the right word. You kind of get that feeling in this story. It's a really, really great one. And I definitely want to read more from Riley Sager because I finished this so fast. I also feel like I read um, like hardback books a lot faster than any other book. And this one had a ton of dialogue too, which made me really happy because I love dialogue. Now let's get into my TBR. So I showed you guys my physical TBR for fall in one of my last videos, but I showed you, I think, a total of 10 books. Now, y'all know I read between like 16 to 20 books a month. So 10 books for the entire season of fall is not going to cut it. So I had to share with you guys some more books on my TBR that I am excited to read. And the first book is actually on my TBR for September and I can't wait to read it. It is called And Then Life Was Beautiful by Asia Monique. I've never read this book before, but so many people have said that it's great and it looks like it's going to be one that I won't want to put down. It says August Hansen was a silent type, the kind who spoke through his actions and not his words. He possessed enough power to make me feel safe and secure. I was ready to open up and share the parts of myself I'd never share with another. And then I got hit with the truth that changed everything. There was a slight chance he'd still want me, only he had to accept our baby too. I mean, okay, is this accidental pre pregnancy? Like, I'm not mad about it. And I've never, or I actually have read something from Asian Monique. I was gonna say I've never read anything from her, but I read uh, Dear Amelia and it was cute. So I wanna read more from that author. And then I have one more romance, which is You Again. And I love this author's writing. I feel like Lauren Lane has really cutesy, fluffy writing if you like just like fluffy and fun reads, but it's hard for me to find one in fall that gives fall vibes. But I feel like this one is definitely going to give that. I mean, the cover alone is giving like smart girl book, you know what I mean? And it says Mac and uh, Thomas, they have to stop meeting like this. After a disastrous meet cute, turns into repeated meetings, a free-spirited rebel and a stodgy rule follower come to realize that the only one they can't get away from is the one they can't live without. Looks cute, cover looks cute, synopsis looks great, and it's a pretty short read, I think. Yeah, it's only 253 pages, so I feel like I'll finish this very fast. And now let's get into the contemporary fiction that I'm really excited to read. Again, I've been in a big contemporary fiction mood and I feel like I will continue to be as the season goes on. The first book that I wanna read is The Comeback by Ella Berman. 
Uh, this says a deep dive into the psyche of a young actress raised in the spotlight under the influence of a charming manipulative film director and the moment when she decides his time is up. I actually picked this up whenever I was in uh, Mich Michigan at like a small shop. I'd never heard of it before but it looked really good um, and I love stories that tell just like a deeper story of a woman and this says for lovers of the Whisper Network which I wasn't obsessed with the Whisper Network but I love what they were trying to do with the book. I read that book it's um, by Chandler Baker and Chandler Baker wrote on the front raw and nuanced sliced straight down to the nerve a chilling expose unfolding in real time um, and then there's also a bunch of things on the back um, that say that it's like very very good and it's deeply satisfying and it's, it's spectacularly compelling. Um, those are all the things that I want to read whenever I read a contemporary fiction, especially in fall. And another book that I cannot wait to read is No Reservations. This is a story of friends. All of them get together and they seem to have like such a great connection until I think one of the friends gets cancer and I think it just shows like how that goes with friends and having to support another friend who has terminal cancer. Um, it says that they go to Jamaica for a trip as a final gift from the girls and it's a story of grief and I just am not ready for this but this is the book that I need to read in fall. You know what I mean? It's giving fall. I also picked this up in one of my book shopping videos so you guys can go back and check that out. There's new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday so there are always videos here. And another book that I cannot wait to read is Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is one of my favorite authors of contemporary fiction. I think I've read five of her books and every single one I have enjoyed. There hasn't been one book, well I'd say that there's been one book. There's been one book that was like mid, but the, if it's just mid I'm okay with that. Um, all the other books that I've read were incredible. And this says Elsie Porter is an average 20 something and yet what happens to her is anything but ordinary on an on a rainy New Year's Day she heads out to pick up a pizza for one she isn't expecting to see anyone else in the shop much less the adorable and charming Ben Ross their chemistry is instant and electric Ben cannot even wait 24 hours before asking to see her again within weeks the two are head over heels in love by May they've eloped only nine days later, Ben is out riding his bike when he's hit by a truck and killed on impact. Elsie hears the sirens outside her apartment and by the time she gets downstairs, she has already been whisked off to the hospital. There she must face Susan, the mother-in-law she has never met and who doesn't even know Elsie exists. Interweaving Elsie and Ben's charmed romance with Elsie and Susan's healing process, Forever Interrupted will remind you that there's more than one way to find a happy ending. And again, I love her books because she usually weaves some type of romance in the story, but it's like a subplot and that is what I love in a contemporary fiction. Like I feel like I can't read contemporary fiction without a romance in it just because I'm a romance girl, you know? So these are the types of books that I really really enjoy. I also cannot wait to read Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. This is my third book by this author and her newest release I absolutely ate up. You guys will get a full review in my wrap up uh, in my wrap up but there's also a another video coming where I'm going to share my thoughts on that book as well and because I ate that book up I'm like I need to read this soon because her writing just does something to me. Um, I could not put it down and it was just it was just incredible. So I definitely want to read more from this author. I read Before We Were Strangers years back and I was okay with it but I think at the time I was very heavy in my like only wanting to read popular book talk books vibe mostly because I was just getting back into reading and I think that and not for everyone but I think for me I couldn't read contemporary fiction at that time because being a English literature major in college I feel like burnt me out so bad on books because you have to read so many books that you don't like and it just felt like homework so I needed to read something light and fluffy and fun and now I feel like I'm back in the era of kind of dipping my toe dipping my toe heavy on dipping my toe back into those types of books which makes me excited um because I know what I like I like contemporary fiction with a sprinkle of romance there has to be that in there for me to be really excited about it because I'm a romance girly but this says imagine opening a book and discovering that someone else has written your life story and I'm pretty sure it's about a couple 
who they like dated when they were younger. I'm pretty sure they broke up. And then a girl, she ends up like buying a book or something and she reads it and sees on the first page that it's pretty much her love story with this like past lover. Um, and it just looks really good. It looks really, really good. Um, it says that uh, she, the only way she can put her mind at ease is to find and confront Jay Colby but she's not quite prepared to learn the truth behind the fiction. And Jay Colby, I'm assuming, is the guy who wrote the book. And then um, another book that is in a different genre is a fantasy. And this one actually just came out and I cannot wait to read it. It is a sapphic romance. And it's by Haley Jennings. It's called This Ravenous Fate. It is about a vampire hunter and a vampire. And both of them, they end up having feelings for each other, but obviously they're not supposed to because the vampire hunter is supposed to be hunting the vampire. That is just all that I need. You know what I mean? Like that is all that I need in the book. This is a YA uh, book. I just feel like those are the types of fantasies that I like to read. I've also heard incredible things about this story. So many people have been in love with this story and it's so unique because you don't see sapphic romances very often when it comes to like black characters and vampires and fantasy and like all these new like tropes I feel like that I don't see very often are in a book that I was able to pick up at Barnes and Noble. Like the fact that she was even published with a publisher and was a booktuber, is a booktuber, um, is just so inspiring. So I cannot wait to read this, but I've heard great things about it as well. And the um, book that I have for a thriller, like book that's on my TBR is Listen for the Lie. I've also heard great things about this one and this says, what if you thought you murdered your best friend if everyone else thought so too? And what if the truth doesn't matter? With thrillers, I feel like I don't need to know too much about what's going on because that is enough for me. I kind of like to go into them blind and this one looks like it's gonna be a page turner. One of my friends at the gym, she actually told me to pick this one up and she said that she thought that I would really enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this gave you lots of recs to read this fall. But also if you guys want more, definitely check out my previous video that I shared which with a bunch of other recs. I had a ton of thriller recs to share with you guys. I also had even more fantasy recs, even more uh, contemporary fiction, even more romance recs, and I know that you guys will enjoy them. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!